Hi. So in our in my last video, we saw the uh, the MIMO structure, the transfer transfer function matrix form of the MIMO structure, where we considered uh, these m inputs and n outputs connected through the different transfer functions. And since it is LDI system, we said it is the output y i can be written as a linear function, linear combination of their inputs. At the same time, we figured out uh, the variable, an important uh, variable pairing problem in order to uh, consider the MVC so solutions. And this variable pr pairing problem is, uh, is to say clearly as which output yi should be controlled with the help of the manipulated variable ug. In order to find this particular uh, pairing, pairing let us consider two input two output system and it is open loop relationship as we have said in the matrix form instead of matrix form now I am saying I am I'm just mentioned this in terms of the linear combination form. So y1 is said in terms of u1 and u2. Similarly, output y2 is said in terms of u1 and u2. And its controls and its block diagram can be cons can be seen as uh, this way, where your output y1 is is being affected with the with, by u1 and u2. U1 g1 g1 1 u1 is plus g1 2 u2. So observe this particular um, structure. So far, we were looking into single input and single output system. If y1 is u1, then it is only g11 that transfer function that we have been talking about. But since now, if I want to consider as a multiple variable CISO system, then if even if I am considering y1 being controlled with the help of u1, there is an interactive term g12 or g21 for y2 is being uh, playing certain role over here. All right. So now let us consider um, the uh, control loop problems. Let us consider a pairing between y1 with u1 and y2 with u2. So what happens is if I consider a control loop between y1 and u1, the controller gc1 is to be designed. Similarly, between y2 to u2, gc2 is to be controller, uh, controller transfer function gc2 is playing a role here. Now let us study the effect of u1 over y1. Okay. So under the condition when the loop 2 which is between y2 and u2 is open and when it is closed. Let us consider the case when loop 2 is open. If loop 2 is open then y1 is given by g11 u1 because loop 2 is closed so y2 is not playing any, uh, y2 is being governed by directly by, uh, by uh, u2. If loop 2 is, is open, then y2 is directly governed by u2 and therefore there is no interactive term that has been account is be going to play for y1. So the transfer function between y1 and u1 is going to be directly y1 is equal to g11 times u1, all right? And y2 is going to be definitely g21 by u1, but since it is open, so I am not going to take account of this. I am interested in the transfer function between y1 and u1 as of now. All right. So then if I have the loop 2 is closed now, in that condition my loop 2 is closed. So now this particular loop is going to create some something in, in, uh, in, get, in getting into y1 here. So in that case, what is the transfer function between y1 and u1? is what we have to figure out because this particular loop is getting closed. So you can see that this particular adder part, this particular signal is, is having some loop being closed over here. When the loop was open, this, this particular signal was getting affected only for the change in the u2. But now when the loop is closed, then changes into the u1 will also getting, getting affected by because of this particular loop closed and that is approaching the y1. And this particular transfer function we can figure out because this is a uh, linear system again. So uh, considering that other input which is your u2 input is all is not there, then the transfer function can be written in the form of this between y1 and u1 which turns out to be having this term which 
is as we have seen it, it turns out to be that it is dependent on this GC2, which is the controller transfer function of control loop 2, right. So, you see that the control loop 2 as soon as it gets closed is affecting the output y1 through this transfer function, which is primarily driven by g12 and g21, which are the two interactive transfer functions over here, all right. Fair enough. So, what we have here is we can call these particular effective gain g11 effective, which is changed, which is changing the original g11 transfer function by this particular transfer function uh, after designing the transfer function, uh, after designing the control loop 2, uh, con controller for the control loop 2, okay. So, now controller GC1 must use this particular transfer function G11 for, uh, for the control loop gain, co control loop 1 um, controller design, all right. If that is the case, then the presence of this G12 and G21 need to be noticed here, all right. And at the same time, one has to make sure that irrespective of the loop 2 is closed or loop, loop 2 is open, the controller GC1 should be something that I design it and is able to do the control objectives between Y1 and U1. So, it turns out that our aim becomes, our aim here is to have a method to determine the relationship between u1 and y1 with loop 2 closed without knowing gc2 because now this becomes a chicken and egg problem. We are designing the controllers gc1 and gc2. When I am designing gc1, gc2 is playing a role. Similarly, in a vice versa, when I am designing the gc2, gc1 will play a role. So, now without knowing GC2, how do I consider this particular relationship Y1 and U1 to be known so that I am able to design the GC1 and GC2 independent of each other. Let us understand this uh, relationship at a limiting case which is the steady state right now. What we have at steady state, at steady state S is tending to 0 which is the frequency term turns to be 0. Now, assuming that the integral action is there for the controller GC2, there is a there is a background behind considering the integral action for the controller gain GC2 because I am considering the steady state now. Now, at steady state uh, you, you have un, since our controllers have p proportional integral and derivative terms. Now, this particular uh, uh, even if I have the proportional term in the controller, the integral term is the most effective or is the most responsible term in the steady state. Since I am doing the steady state analysis here, I am assuming that I am considering only the integral action for the controller again, controller GC2. And therefore, if when S tends to 0, we, I, can, I can consider GC2 tends to infinity. And now, if that is the case, then the G, G11 effective at S is equal to 0 turns out to be this. And as soon as I consider GC2 is turning to be uh, the gain um, of the controller um, of control loop 2 is, uh, is, is very large, then in, in that case, I can write G11 effective as G11 minus G12, G21 upon G22. So, this way I would be able to design GC1 irrespective of GC2. If I consider this particular gain term, then I will be able to design the gains for the uh, controller 1. As a different perspective, I can consider this steady state relationship as just simply the gains of Y1. Uh, for Y1, I can write K11 U1 plus K12 U2 and y2 as k21 u1 plus k22 u2. So, these uh, the controller job is to design this k11, k12, k21 and k22. Just keep a note of this as of now. All right. 
So let's come up with a particular method called relative gain array which is, which is using these effective gains and, and so on in order to find the variable pairing problem. This was rather developed by Ed Bristol, a control engineer from Foxborough uh, and, and he developed this uh, as a heuristic technique. It predicts the interaction between control loops when multiple CISO loops are used. This is what we want because um, these interactions, if these interactions are minimal, then only I will be able to use multiple CISO method. He designed this particular relative gain lambda ij between input j uj means I am saying uj and the output i which is yi and is defined by the lambda ij which is gain between input j and output u output i with all other loops open. Similarly, it is uh, it's a ratio between these two gains and the second gain the, the denominator gain is between the same input j and output i with all other loops closed. So if this particular gain value is changing significantly when the other loops are open or closed then this is not a good pairing option. But if these gain values are almost same then there is a chance of considering uh, this variable pair, pair between um, uh, between output uh, output yi and input uj. Alright, how do I calculate this now? Heuristically this ratio is giving me a very nice out very nice idea that okay these two gains should be almost same and that is why lambda ij should be almost equal to 1 then the, the um, variable pair uh, yi and uj is good to consider. To calculate this particular gain term, we say that okay, when, when I am considering again this two input two output system, the output y1 and input u1, the gain between the two is given by the partial derivative dou y1 by dou u1 when u2 is constant because my this particular control loop 2 is now open. If the loop 2 is open means u2 is constant. So there I get g11 of 0 which is k11 when um, you remember we have k11 given by uh, is, is said as y1, y2, k11, k12, k21 at steady state u1 and u2 alright. So this is how the k11 is coming up here. Similarly, when I have to consider control loop, all the other control loops to be 0, all, sorry control loops to be closed, then the output, the gain between output y1 and u1 should be considered bit when y2 is constant. So this y2 is constant gives you g11 effective of 0 and this is what we had considered. Um, uh, if I consider it by uh, the method by g11 effective way of finding which is going to give you g11 uh, we, we found, found this value as g11 minus something all right. But in general when I have to calculate if it is multiple input and multiple output system then it is easier to find this with this particular formula which is lambda ij given by dou y1 by dou uj when all the uis are 0 and of course i is not equal to j, all the other uis are 0 as except uj and the this particular gain when all the loops are closed are found when yj is equal to 0 means the output, output all the other outputs are 0 uh, except yi, alright. So now here comes the, the matrix of values lambda ij's which is like for example it is a 2 input 2 output case. So I will get lambda 1 1, lambda 1 2, lambda 2 1, lambda 2 2 which is this defines with the variable pairing between y1, u1 and, and, and this one is y1 with u2, this is y2 with u1 
and this defines y2 um, with u2. All right. Uh, so this is what my lambda matrix is about. What is the significance of this RG? We have we have this instead of single element. Now I'm considering this as a matrix. And what should be the value of these RG elements? To certain extent, we said in order to have the variable pairing, a nice variable pairing means that particular lambda ij value is almost equal to 1. If that particular value is close to 1, then the gain when the loop is other loops are open or closed are almost same and that is the range, that is the value we are looking forward. So we for a 2 input to output system, as we said, uh, the elements can be returned in the matrix form lambda 1, 1, lambda 1, 2, lambda 2, 1 and lambda 2, 2. Let us see what are the properties of the lambda ij. Because we are pairing between the, um, the, a, the, the y 1 is either controlled by u 1 or u 2. So there the row elements, the sum of the row elements is going to be 1. Similarly, sum of the, the column elements are going to be 1. All right. So each row will sum to 1 and or each column will sum to 1. So in case of the 2 input 2 output system, I can write my, my RGA matrix like this by identifying only one element lambda 1 1 because now if lambda 1 1 is given, so lambda 1 1 means this value becomes 1 minus lambda 1 1. This particular column should also be 1. So this value becomes 1 minus lambda 1 1. Therefore, this element lambda 2 2 is equal to lambda 1 1. All right. So our job for 2 input to output system reduces it to finding just one element of the RGA matrix which is lambda 1 1 or any other any 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 one element of the RGA matrix. Coming back to the juice blending, blending problem which we discussed in the previous video where we had two streams, two, um, two streams, flow streams, u1 is the 40 percent juice stream, u2 is the water stream and y2 is the flow control, y1 is my composition control. Let us consider that z1 is the volume fraction of juice in stream, stream 1 which was 40 percent in our case and z is the volume fraction of juice in the blend stream y1 which is 30 percent that is desired. At the same time, I already know that the flow rate is F1 plus F2 which is given by Y2. And now we should be able to frame up our, um, our uh, dynamics here in terms of saying that okay, since no juice concentration is there in the water flow, the composition of F times Z which is output, uh, 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 the composition at the output side is equal to nothing but the composition. Um, at F1 and Z1 given by only F1 Z1 which is coming from the U1 side of it. So if this is what is the, uh, the problem and we have this F1 flow is given by 3 GPM and F2 is given by 1 GPM, your problem is to consider Z1 as uh, uh, we already said it is 40 percent juice value, juice uh, concentration. So, which is Z1 is 0.4 mole uh, fraction juice. All right. So, we will be able to frame our problem in terms of getting the, uh, the transfer function between um, uh, transfer function between Y2 and uh, uh, transfer functions values G11, G12 and G21, G12, G21 and G22. Frame this up in terms of the values given here and then find out what is lambda 1 1. Try this exercise and you will understand that and as soon as you have this lambda 1 1, lambda 1 1 approximately in this particular, I am giving this the answer to this, lambda 1 1 turns out to be almost near to 0. Very small value 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 that comes up whereas lambda lambda 1 2 or lambda 2 1 turns out to be, be near to zero, near to 1 value. It means it shows that 
lambda 1, 2 and lambda 2, 1 approximately near to 1 value shows that the vari variable pairing should be uh, with uh, output y1, we should have control with uh, control with u2 similarly with uh, or so y2 should be paired with u1 and y1 should be paired with u2. If that is what the variable pairing we consider, we would be able to design an MBC so system. All right, let's understand this. Let's take a quick review of this relative gain array that that is introduced in this video. What we have is RGA matrix that contains the individual relative gains as elements, and these elements are given by lambda ij. This lambda ij is is calculated as the ratio of gains, gain ratio of gains when the loop is open, uh, when the other loops are open and when the other loops are closed. All right. So, if this is what is the m input and n output system, then the sum of each column is 1 in the RGA matrix form. Uh, so, it says that lambda ij summation i equals 1 to n, uh, lambda ij is equal to 1. Similarly, sum of each row is 1. At the same time, if I am getting lambda ij equal to negative, it means it is a failure or an unacceptable term that we have. Negative value of lambda ij means what? I have a gain, so it is a ratio of two gains. If the numerator gain is positive, the denominator gain is going to be negative. So, changing the sign means what? It was earlier negative feedback system if I am designing. The, the other case when the loop gets closed, the system becomes positive feedback and it becomes unstable. So, negative lambda ij is a no-no case. Completely reject pair. It, it, it gives you an indication that this particular pair option of yi with uj should not be tried at all. That is a very good answer that we are getting by the way. At the same time, it is if the large, if the lambda ij value is very large, particularly if lambda ij is very large as compared to the value 1, then we should be considering, uh, we should also not be considering such pairing options because there is a large change in the gain um, and we should not consider that. Now, let us consider this particular case. If I have uh, g of 0 means the steady state gain is given by something like this, you see very nice one terms are turning out, but the rest of the two terms are also close to 1. As we see the corresponding RGA turns out to be giving you 400, 400 values. Since this is uh, based on the property of the RGA, the sum of rows should be equal to 1 and the sum of columns should be equal to 1. We say the anti-diagonal terms turns out to be minus 399. We said the negative values, it is completely no, no case. So, we will, we are ending up in choosing lambda 1, 1 and lambda 2, 2 means variable pairing option as y1 with u1 and y2 with u2 with such large gain. What happens? This particular case, let us understand this with just by simple, simply adding a 5 percent model error. So, now if I am adding this model error by 1 percent, you notice that this particular term g21 of 0 is having 5 percent error. Instead of 0.95, let us say it has 1. So, now the corresponding RGA turns out to be this. This negative term as I, as we say is a no-no case. It is a complete no case. You saw that if you would have consider, considered a variable pairing with here as y1 with u1, as y1 with u1 and y2 with u2, y2 with u2. If this kind of pairing is considered, the as soon as I have a very small model error here, what we are getting a negative RGA element here. As soon as negative RG element, there is a complete chance of going into instability. So, the large values of RGA element is also signifying that the system is no longer robust enough. So, let us not try considering the variable pairing which gives you a very large 
RGA element. All right. Okay. So we, in conclusion, if it's a large value or a negative value, it turns out it is sensitive to the model uncertainty, and we should say that okay, pairing is not possible. One should use a single loop which is multiple output with multiple input. Don't try to consider multiple multiple loops or don't try decomposing it into multiple systems here. Large value of relative gain indicates effect of model uncertainty on pairing. If at all you have gone with variable pairing, if at all you have gone with multiple variable CISO ways by introducing multiple control loops, it will result into model uncertainty. All right. Let us consider pairing fit large systems. So far we have considered giving you um, two input, two output in order to get some kind of idea that these RGAs, RGA values, RGA ways are, um, is, is a good way of looking at it. Uh, Let us take certain examples with large systems. Of course, this itself is, a, is, is still a three input, three output case. So if that is what is the, uh, the, um, the uh, RGA elements coming, RGA matrix given to you, then the question is which input to be paired with which output. It turns out we will have to consider logical reasoning. The logic, logical reasoning means I would be definitely rejecting this, these pairs which are kind of negative values. The values which are near to 0 is also rejected. So this is not the question, this is not a, this is not the solution we should consider for. So let us consider now each row wise. Now as soon as I have rejected these, these two, I am left with only one pair in this particular row, which is my y3, uh, this is my lambda 3, lambda 3, 2, which means the y3 should be paired with u2. This gets frozen. So as soon as I say this, now I cannot consider the input u2, so I will have to consider this particular lambda element, which is saying that y1 should be paired with u1. And now I am left with only one choice with, with y2, which is y2 should be paired with u3. So such kind of logical reasoning typically gives you a single option. If there are multiple options, then there are other methods to narrow down to a single option. All right. If I have um, the, um, if I have multiple input and multiple outputs, it may be possible that um, since there are, I am looking forward for lambda or the RGA matrix to be square matrix. So what we have is, for example, the gain matrix which is not square, but I want the RGA matrix to be square then I can consider RGA being formed with the help of this GN element wise multiplication with GN, GN was transposed. For the non-square RGAs, I can consider uh, Penrose inverse here. So for M input and N output, I can consider and when M is greater than N, I can consider left uh, Penrose inverse and which is, which is like RGA is input scaling dependent in this case and other way around. So non-RGAs are, there are other methods for non-square non RGA matrices. In this case, we would like to, our objective is to eliminate M minus N inputs. Since I have M greater than N case, M is greater than N, M is the number of inputs and N is the number of outputs. So number of inputs is greater than number of outputs. So I would like to eliminate M minus N inputs and then work with just the exactly n inputs to be paired with n outputs. So criteria here in order to reject these or eliminate these m minus n inputs is to consider that the jth input is considered effective if the sum of jth column is large and vice versa. Uh, we will look into this particular procedure now. We'll, what we will do here is we will consider finding the gain matrix we will calculate the non-square RGA, RGA. we will calculate the sum of each column of the RGA. Now we will eliminate the inputs that correspond to the smallest sum of the columns. So then we will just keep those 
n inputs which are giving the larger sum of the columns values and those after eliminating this then again one can calculate RGA which turns out to be n input and output uh, RGA matrix and look forward for this. So, these heuristic methods to a certain extent are have been developed, but at the same time they are very very powerful methods because they come from the idea that ok I am dividing I am I am decomposing the system in terms of multiple CISO inputs at the same time I'm, when I am doing that, that time whether the other loops are open or closed I should not get the uh, very significant change into that particular uh, system performance. Let us take an example here, we will not look into the system behavior or the working of the system, but let us see what are the inputs and outputs and can we do and given a particular RGA will we be able to uh, figure out what input should be paired with what output. So, our in this particular polyethylene reactor case the control variables are our uh, reactor temperature T and the ethylene concentration C2 whereas our manipulated variables are superficial velocity of the feed phi, catalyst feed grade QC and the feed temperature Tf. Okay. So, I said just take it blindly that this is 3 input to output case and let us see if I can do something in order to understand the RGA part and finding out the variable pairing with the help of RGA in this case. So, steady state gain of this part of this particular process is again you have um, 3 input and 2 output case. So, this gives you 2 cross 3 matrix form, uh, these are steady state gains by the way. And when I compute the non square uh, RGA matrix, it turns out that we get this kind of uh, RGA matrix again 2 cross 3. And when I take the sum here, I see that this particular sum is very small and this suggests that Tf should be eliminated. So, because Tf is perhaps not making much of a uh, uh, much of the uh, control over the rest of the two the control variable C2 and T over here. If that is the case then um, our problem is corresponding lambda Ajs are still high and at the same time these are, so I cannot consider these variables. So, it suggests that C2 should be paired with phi and T should be paired with QC, but these gains are still, still on the higher side. So, should I consider this kind of variable pairing or not? Let us analyze it in a slightly different way as well. I can consider a um, combination of two, 2 inputs with 2 outputs. So, I will have if I am considering 2 inputs, so for example, I am eliminating Tf here. So, what I will get is 2 input 2 output system QC5 with C2T, then let us see what the RGA comes out. If I reject eliminate QC, then I have a subsystem S2, which will have 2 inputs phi and Tf and same for the same outputs and the, R, the corresponding RGA is this. If I consider rejecting or eliminating phi here, then I have QC and TF as 2 inputs and I get uh, the RGA for the corresponding subsystem S3, uh, it is not subsystem, the option S3 as 23 and 23 options. Now, you see that the difference between if I consider option S1, then the RGA element value is 28 whereas for option S3 I have the RGA value turning out to be 23. I am perhaps not going to consider option S2 because the RGA value is extremely high. So, eliminating QC is not an option at all, all right. So, but it is still um, uh, it is least for S3. So, in the previous case I was getting S1 uh, as large uh, even, even for S3 they, it turns out that it is giving the uh, the large uh, large RGA matrix. So, do we have other methods that can indi indicate interactions here? Yes, this is another method called condition number, which is developed by Gao and Bliss at in 1996, but still being used. So, what this says 
is that the condition number is the it, it is based on eigenvalues of this of the uh, gain matrix. Now this eigenvalues if I arrange it in uh, largest to smallest then condition number is the ratio of the eigenvalue the largest to smallest eigenvalue. So it also uh, one can look forward dividing it into a set of square matrices and getting these condition numbers. For this we will compute SVT for each set and then we will find the smallest CN is going to be the most effective one for pairing options. Smaller condition number indicates well conditioned system it means the pairing is possible. All right. So now what we will consider that if I have a square matrix G given by and I have done the SVD decomposition which gives you U sigma V transpose V, v transpose and sigma turns out to be my diagonal matrix which is giving me the eigenvalues from sigma 1 to sigma r. So I know that r is the rank of G transpose G if the large value of condition number it can says G is L condition. So if that is what is the case I, I can always consider for getting for non singular matrix how, how do I get it and so and so forth and if condition number is large uh, CN is large if both G and G inverses have the large inverse large elements and that is what that is the reason we are consider calling condition number large condition values is G is ill conditioned. We had this particular example and example had three options S of systems S1, S2, S3 when we consider elimination of one input value phi, sig, phi, tf or um, c. So in that case we have this sigma 1, sigma 2 turning out to be these values and these condition numbers are turning out to be these. Now this condition number of 123 corresponding to this, this particular option S1 signifies that it is well conditioned and we should consider the option S1 uh, which was also one, one particular uh, case of non-square non, uh, uh, RGA was also giving the same answer. But the caveat here is that one can always consider when we are dealing with condition number, so sorry this uh, slide, um, here with the, with the idea of a, a smallest condition number coming up for the option S1 which gives me more, uh, more heuristic answer saying that okay I should use perhaps the option S1 because in even in the RGA case also in this particular case uh, what we had the RGA values 28 turning out to be in option S1 and 23 in case of option S3 which are not significantly different from each other. So I still had the option S1 and option S3 both to consider in this case but with condition number now I am certain that I will be going with option S1 because this is giving me the least condition number and uh, lesser changes into the gain will, will be affecting it. Let us look into one more case. If my gain matrix which is uh, at steady state is given by 1, 0, 10 and 1, the, uh, for this particular case the um, RGA matrix is very nice 1, 0 and 0, 1 shows that this particular element uh, the vari variable pairing that is coming up from the RGA suggestion is that Y1 should be paired with U1 and Y2 should be paired with U2. But in this case the condition number turns out to be 100 and much which is still large and therefore um, what should we consider here. Here turns out that if I change K12 by just simply 10% increase which is 0.1 it gives you some sigma value which will change this particular um, RGA matrix significantly and you can assess what the condition number is, is helping you to understand on the, in terms of the uh, robustness of the uh, variable pairing. So uh, it turns out that as soon as I considered this as 0 0.1 my this particular gain matrix becomes singular right. This corresponds to the systems which are which are difficult to control because as soon as your gain is uh, 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 these are almost uh, 
giving you the singular matrix so condition number has no significance now because you are there are only two um, there is no sigma largest and sigma small here in this case um, rank is this is this is losing the rank here so in such cases um, the variable pairing is not a good idea and 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 that's why one should resort to the single loop cases single loop case here so the idea here is to understand that rga along with cn is giving you some of the other answer and this should satisfy you to attempt for variable pairing and and see the simplified answers to it simplified control law solutions so our, our procedure for getting the condition number is we will arrange the singular values in order of largest to smallest and we will find the cn if cn is more than 10 then one or more inputs should be can be deleted is what i can what we can consider let's take this as an example again this this is gain gain matrix given to you for which the um, the singular matrix the uh, diagonal matrix when we do the svd singular value de decomposition turns out to be uh, giving you the largest sigma value is 1.618 whereas smallest value is 0 0.0097. In this case now with this particular uh, diagonal, diagonal, uh, diagonal matrix decom decomposed diagonal matrix condition number turns out to be 166.15 which is much larger than 10. 10. Let us take the same example of the gain and see what gives you the what the RGA matrix gives. Now RGA matrix turns out to be giving you certain negative values. If that is what is the case, then we turn out as we did the logical reasoning the other time, we, we will consider not, we will not consider these values. If we are not considering these values, uh, the negative values, again here this value is, is almost equal to 0, so we will reject, we will consider 2.2165 which is Y3 uh, paired with U1 with u1 so that's why it is marked with red now if i'm considering this then i'm left with a choice on um, for the second row as choosing 0 0.5407 find 0 0.5407 which is y2 with u3 and therefore i'm left with only one choice y1 with u2 right if that is the case then let's consider arranging this particular uh, if if that is what is the case okay so this 3 value 2 value and 0.5 value is still okay when the RGA matrix were considered they are still not almost equal to 1 but I, I should have selected 1.22 in, in a real good say but since I wanted to satisfy all the output variables I had to choose the variables uh, the RGA elements which are giving me at least the positive answer, positive element values. Let us consider pairing uh, based on the decision based on both condition number and RGA. Condition uh, number suggests two variables can be controlled because I had very large you, you see that this is uh, this is what is the small if I consider this as smallest the condition number turns out to be very large. But if I consider only two values which are close to each other, so it is saying that okay, if I consider these only two subsystems, two inputs and two um, two input system, two input two output system, perhaps I have a better answer. So let's take make two cross two subsystems. If two cross two subsystems it's considered, there are three possibilities because we have with two output variables. We have y1, y2, y1, y3 and y2, y3, three options. So with respect to y1, y2, again we have three, three choices, u1, u2, u1, u3 or u2, u3. If that is what is the case, then what are the condition numbers with respect to these combinations coming up and what are the RG element, corresponding RG elements that comes up. Because this is 2 cross 2 system, again I can create a, create a matrix out of it. For example, it is 39. So this is 39, this element is definitely 38, this element is 38 and 39 because I know for 2 cross 2 only one element is enough to uh, find the entire matrix. Okay, so with condition number 
and RGA. Let us see what is the uh, consideration that we can consider. Um, if I have to consider the lowest value of the condition number, I will consider this value or this value, right? Which is giving me pairing options y1, y3 with u1, u2 and or y2, y3 with u1, u2, okay? All right. So, corresponding RGA values are almost same. So, fair enough. So, two options I can explore for um, getting the multivariable, um, multivariable CISO system. All right. So, um, what we have considered, okay. all right. Um, so, in this, in this particular video, we considered getting the MIMO system decomposed into multiple variable CISO systems with the help of RGA and CN, C, CN method. So, RGA and CN can be considered as tools to find out what is the best variable pairing possible. At the same time, they are also telling that what is, what is not to be explored, that is more important. So, RGA and CN definitely tells you that those variable pairing options should not be explored at all. But whatever is coming closer to the desired values will definitely give you answers uh, of, of satisfying control objectives with the help of simplified controllers, with the help of the multiple control loops and simplified PID control structures. Thank you.